Today we're going to talk about shopping when you don't know your style. Sounds pretty confusing and difficult, huh? Let's dive in. Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here in front of my closet. Uh, today I am going to talk about a topic that comes up a lot when I talk with women, whether clients or just women I run into who then learn what I do. This idea of I don't know my style, so it makes shopping really hard. I'm gonna back up one second and say a proper hello. I am Kristen Kane. I am a style and mindset coach. If you're not familiar with my work, I help women create wardrobes they absolutely love wearing. And I do that by paying attention to all the style stuff, by helping them learn how to edit their closet, how to know how to shop, how to know how to build outfits, and also by paying attention to what the thought loops are that are happening in their mind, often running in the background for decades that are sabotaging all that work they're doing trying to build a wardrobe they love wearing because if we don't address the thought loops and the limiting beliefs that are usually put there decades earlier if we don't address those as we're doing the closet work we don't get to the root of the problem we don't actually ever achieve the style results we want to achieve and i find that the greatest transformations for my clients happen when we really dig into the mindset. So that's the work I do. Style therapy is how I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. There is a link down below with all the details. And if you are interested in taking it the step further, a one hour free consultation call, there's a link down below also for you to sign up for that. And on that call, we'll dig into what your style struggle really is, because oftentimes it's different than what you think the struggle is. I have thankfully lots of experience in lots of style struggles. I've yet to meet one I can't help solve. And so I can help you see more clearly what's really going on and what's really preventing you from loving how you look and feel when you get dressed. I'll explain the whole style therapy process and then help you make a decision about whether it's the right time and the right fit for you right now. Today's uh, struggle, a follower wrote in and asked me to address this and I am happy to do this. Thank you for submitting this question. I don't know my style, so it makes it really hard to shop. And that is completely true. It is 100% true. If you don't know your style, it makes it really hard to shop. It's similar to if you don't know what you wanna have for dinner, it makes it really hard to shop for the ingredients. If you don't know what you want your garden to look like when the you know season is at full bloom, you, it makes it really hard to shop for plants. If you don't know where you wanna go on your vacation, it makes it really hard to know what road to take or where to go at the, when you get to the airport, you know, what terminal to go to. It, it is exactly the same. And yet I find with the style stuff, it gets women so stuck and they get so hung up on this idea of, I don't know my style and therefore it makes shopping really difficult completely understand and we're going to dive into that a little bit. So today I'm going, I have a couple of notes, but I'm kind of free forming it because I know that this is an important topic. And if I waited until I had all my notes, you know, kind of organized and fleshed out a, a more um, kind of organized outline and, and went bullet point by bullet point, it was going to take me more weeks to get this video made. And I wanted to do this today. So the first thing that I will say, in addition to what I just said about the garden and the meals and the travel, it, it makes sense that if you don't know your style, shopping is difficult. And the next thing I'll say is that women put way too much pressure on themselves to know their style. And by that, I mean, they want terminology. They want a phrase or a title or a, um, they want a label for what their style is. I'm asked this all the time by clients. Well, okay, well, what would you say my style is? Can you, know, can you identify my style for me? And, and I'm really quick to say, no, actually I can't. And I'm not going to give a label that is going to then box you in, so to speak, to a specific style or a specific you know, type of clothing. That doesn't mean that I don't ever do work with clients where we talk about style mentors or um, style crushes. I have lots of video information on that where it's good to have an idea, a vibe of, okay, Parisian tomboy, or I want um, a boho look, or I, I really love a classic pinup look, or I really love kind of a modern um, European vibe. It's not that we can't put terminology on it. It's that I don't want to be the one to do that for you or for a client. I want you to do that work because only then is it actually authentically you. And I think this idea of I don't know my style and then that creating a difficult shopping experience 
is also a, a protection. It's a safety mechanism to not get it wrong. And so we want someone else to tell us, well, this is your style. And, and even if we knew that, it's not like manufacturers are labeling clothing. You know, when I worked at anthropology, for instance, for many years, it's not like anthropology has on the tag, this would be suitable for boho or classic or, you know, urban chic or, you know, alpine modern or what, you know, like it, it doesn't indicate on the tag, this is the appropriate piece if this is your style. So you're still left to figuring it out your own, on your own when you go into a store. So I don't want to label you. I don't want to give you a label that you then need to dress for. That's not going to help. What I want to do is help you understand that you actually probably do know your style, whether you currently like that style or not, you probably do know your style. And knowing your style as it stands right now and knowing the information and being aware of some components, you may not have all of that dialed in and it may not be as obvious to you as it is to me what your style is and how to make that work when you're shopping. So I'm gonna get into a little bit of that now. The fastest way to know your style is to use what's already hanging in your closet because you already have some sort of style, even just the, you know, in the kind of beginning seedling stages, there is already some sort of style happening in your closet. Again, it might not be the style you're ultimately aspiring to have. You might have a very different idea of how you want to dress and the identity you want to step into with regard to your clothing. And yet currently you have a style. And if you're finding it difficult to shop, there are probably some different things going on in there. And as I said, one of them is usually some sort of a safety mechanism. You might not want to take any steps towards making shopping be easier because you're afraid you're going to mess it up or you really would like a different style. So if you say, well, my style is really classic and preppy and kind of Nantucket, for instance, if that's not really the style you want anymore, then you want it to be difficult to shop. Something's incongruent, something's not lining up because if you were dialed in on what your style is, shopping would be easier. In order to identify your style, I suggest you start in your own closet. And by that, I mean, get into your clothing. And there are a couple ways you can do this. There's sort of the fast track way and the slower, more intentional, um, ultimately slightly better results way. And I understand that sometimes it needs to be done more quickly. So the fast track way is going to be try on everything in your wardrobe, take a photo of yourself in it, take some notes of how that garment makes you feel and get really clear on you know, the actual pieces, get some data on the actual pieces you have right now, simply by spending an afternoon trying them on, taking a photo, jotting down some notes about each piece. The other way is the same, but is going to take a little longer. And that is get in the pieces and wear them for the entire day. Put the piece on and actually wear it out of the house, or if you're not leaving the house, wear it around the house for the entire day. Still take a picture, still take notes. There is something very different that happens when we stay in a piece for a long time, at least half a day, if not the full day, versus just trying it on. When we try it on, we put it on our body, we stand in front of the mirror, we look at it, we kind of assess it quickly. We realize the fabric doesn't itch. I like where it hits on my shoulders and the sleeve length and the waist of you know the garment, all of that seems to be right. Or I might tuck it in and that'll make it better. And I like the neckline and I like the color on me and therefore it's good. And, and that is a quick assessment and that can be valuable, but it's not the same as wearing a garment all day or even for half the day and really feeling how that garment performs on your body. It's much easier to decide it's a yes. And oftentimes this is why women have clothing in their closet they're not wearing because they put it on and they think it's a yes, but they're not actually putting it to the test of actually wearing it for a full day. So it stays a yes, even though it might ultimately be a no. And I have shared this before, I will share it very briefly. I once had a red leather jacket. It was a red leather blazer shaped jacket, blazer styling. I purchased it secondhand in Siena, Italy on vacation with my family. My daughter and I went in this shop and I spied it. I loved it. It was like a lipstick, fabulous red. The woman in the shop thought we were French, which is the highest compliment you could ever give me. I bought the jacket. It was within my budget. I bought the jacket. I loved this jacket. I had it in my closet. I swooned over it every time I looked at it. I loved it every time I tried it on. I never really wore it. One day in doing this work for my own closet and wardrobe, I wore the jacket to work at Anthropology, and I worked all day in it. And by the time I got to about noon, I realized that this jacket and I were not necessarily meant for each other. 
The stiffness of the leather was really uncomfortable when I would bend my arms, which I do a lot in retail, a lot in working with clients. It just wasn't comfortable on my body. The sleeves were a little bit snug. And I knew that unlike a classic black leather jacket, I probably wasn't going to wear this lipstick red leather blazer enough to break it in, enough for it to be comfortable and not be kind of hurting my elbows. So I had to make the decision. Am I keeping it? Wishfully thinking I'm gonna keep wearing it. Am I buying a pretty hanger and a hook and hanging it on my wall to remember this beautiful occasion that happened where you know I purchased the jacket? Or am I letting it go? Ultimately, I chose to let it go. Had I just kept trying it on, which I did for you know several months, had I just kept trying it on, I would have kept fooling myself into thinking that this piece deserved a place in my wardrobe. Ultimately, it did not. Not because it wasn't a fabulous piece, but it wasn't a fabulous piece on my body to actually wear. It's still actually part of my style. A red leather blazer is not, not my style. I could wear it with most of the things in my wardrobe. I just realized that that specific piece, only by wearing it all day, did I know that it wasn't actually my style or wasn't actually you know, within my what I needed in my wardrobe. So there's a thing in the world of perfectionism called protecting your potential. And I often find that women telling me they don't know their style is a way of protecting their potential. Because if they feel and they truly believe that, and they say, and their story is that they don't know their style, they can't possibly mess up building their wardrobe. They already don't feel like they always look as put together or as fabulous as they would like to in their clothes. And the story of, I don't know my style, allows them to stay very comfortable right there. It gives them permission to not have a wardrobe and outfits that light them up and that feel and look super authentic and fabulous for the life that they live. Because what they keep telling themselves and anyone who will listen is, I don't know my style, therefore shopping's really hard. We have to be willing to let go of the story that I don't know my style, and we have to be willing to do the work of, I'm gonna figure out my style. You have to decide that figuring out your style and ultimately having a wardrobe you love wearing is worth the risk of maybe doing it a little bit wrong from where you are now to getting to the place where your wardrobe actually really just works for you and you know your style and shopping is easy. There's this sense of if I don't do anything, if I keep holding on to the story of I don't know my style, I can't mess it up. I can't have bad style. I can't have a wardrobe that doesn't work. I can't shop for the wrong things. I can't buy, have buying mistakes if I just don't know my style. It makes shopping really hard. So I find that this happens a lot where this story just keeps getting perpetuated because it makes it easy to not have to shop. Understanding that part of your brain really truly wants to solve the problem. You really want to look better. You want your wardrobe to work for you. You want to be able to put an outfit together and look put together and all of that easily. And yet this story in your brain of, I don't know my style, keeps perpetuating the idea that like, I can't really shop because shopping's hard because I don't know my style. And it just, you just stay stuck. And if you buy something and it proves true that it isn't really your style because you don't really know your style, you perpetuate the loop even further because you're creating more evidence. Every time you shop, you're creating more evidence that it's hard to shop because you don't know your style. So the fastest way to know your style, as I said a few minutes ago, is to get in your wardrobe and wear what's in there. You can either do it the quick way where you try everything on, take a photo and make some notes, or you can take longer and do it where you try a piece on and wear it all day and put it together in an outfit and then take a photo and notes. Either way. Certainly I understand that often when the season is changing and the temperature is changing and it's time to really have the pieces you need in your wardrobe for the next season, doing it the wear every piece for a whole day sometimes is going to take too long and you're gonna have a whole season where you didn't have what you needed because you needed to do it faster. So if that's the case for you, I would do it the more um, kind of expedient way where you're putting the pieces on, taking a photo and taking notes and then having that data and sitting down and giving yourself permission to begin to solve for what is my style. Because if the story has been playing for a decade or longer, which usually it has, it, your brain wants to stay there. It doesn't want you to figure out your style because it's really comfortable in this loop of, I don't know my style and shopping is hard. It doesn't want you to do the work to try to change that loop or get into a different groove with regards to your thoughts because it feels like that could be unsafe. As much as that is actually ridiculous, your brain doesn't know that. It just knows it wants to keep you safe. This loop has been working, why would we change it? So once you've collected the data, either from wearing the clothing all day and taking a little longer with it or doing it over the course of a weekend or an afternoon, once you've collected the data, what you're looking for in those photos and the notes and what you're trying to capture is, how does this garment make me feel? Do I actually love this? And I'm gonna inject a little exercise here in case this is something that is new to you or super unfamiliar and you can't even begin to 
tap into whether the garment feels good or not. I know from personal experience, two decades plus in closets and fitting rooms, that when a woman tries on a garment that lights her up, it shows. I've talked about this here before. There is this magic that happens. I can put a woman in a fitting room and did many times when I worked retail with you know a dozen dresses and she can try on dress after dress and she comes out and kind of looks in the mirror. This one's fine or this one's nice, whatever. When she puts on the dress that is the dress for her, everything changes. The way she stands changes, the way she swings with the dress, the way she moves her body, the way she smiles at herself, the way she flips her hair, the way she speaks to the people who might be with her or to the sales associate. Something has clicked and that dress and that woman are a match. It, she is lit up by the way she looks and feels in that dress. When she sees her reflection, something has changed versus the you know eight or 10 other dresses she had on where that wasn't the case. So I know that there is a garment, there is you know a, a collection of garments that could be your wardrobe where every single piece would spark that. Much like Marie Kondo's Spark Joy, same idea. Some women have a really hard time identifying that, um, just calling that up without having that specific fitting room example always in their mind. And so I wanna just offer really quickly that I heard recently a meditation about tapping into your intuition, which essentially is what we're doing here. We're learning to develop style self-trust and trust our gut, trust our intuition with regard to, is this for me or is it not? Is this my style or is it not? And this meditation, you know, sit quietly and close your eyes and breathe. And, um, and then the prompt was to imagine yourself getting ready for a dinner that would be a couple of hours, that would span a couple of hours um, in a restaurant that served food that wasn't really your favorite. And this dinner was going to be with you and one other person. And this person was to be, you were to conjure this image of this person who was someone who really grated on your nerves. This person was irritating to you. You found them difficult to get along with. This is the person you're going to be spending this two hour dinner with in a restaurant that you don't really love the food or the atmosphere. And the idea is to really truly feel in your body where you feel that sensation and what it feels like. Because what that feeling is, is a no. No, this is not for me. Like we know our bodies are so intelligent and they know intuitively when something doesn't feel good. It's like when you feel like there's some sort of danger and you can kind of feel the hair on your neck kind of stand up and you're like, oh, I need to pay a little more attention to my surroundings. Something feels a little off. Our bodies give us clues. So what you want to begin to tap into in the wardrobe is what clues is my body giving me about the nose? What is that feeling? And if you need to use the restaurant example, use that. If you had to sit down and have dinner with some person, where do you feel that in your body and what does it feel like? And then go to your closet and find a garment that, that goes with that. Find the garments that feel like that kind of dense, heavy, yucky feeling in your body. Those are the nose, super simple. And then at the same time, the meditation then goes into, now imagine you're in your favorite place on earth and you're headed to your favorite restaurant, which just happens to have a location right in your favorite place on earth. And you're going to have dinner with your very favorite person or multiple people who are your absolute favorites to spend time with. And immediately you will likely feel a different sensation in a different place in your body. And she goes on to ask, you know, what color it is and does it have a taste or a smell? And you know, what does it look like? Is it opaque? Is it transparent? Is it sparkly? Is it dark? and really truly tapping into what does a yes feel like? Because that situation, the having dinner with the people you love and the place you love, the food you love, that's a yes, that's a full body yes. And we want our clothing to be the full body yes. And we wanna learn how to edit and leave in the store the things that are the no, the things that feel like having dinner with that person you really don't wanna have dinner with. However you get there, what I want is for you to begin to understand in a somatic way what it feels like when a garment is a yes and what it feels like when a garment is a no, because that's gonna lead you to your style. It doesn't matter that there's a title or a label for your style. It matters that you know, when I wear cream sweaters for me, when I wear cream sweaters, I feel great. For the most part, cream sweaters are a win for me. They, they are a full body yes. Not everyone, but a cotton cream sweater has to do something pretty wrong for it not to be one that I think I'm gonna like, as long as it kind of ticks all the boxes in size and sleeve length and that sort of thing. So know what your full body yeses are, and then you can kind of put together, it's sort of this beautiful patchwork, if you will, of, of all these different components that create your style. So once you have the photos and a little bit of data, and you know what 
your full body yes feels like and what that yucky no feels like, you can really quickly go through your closet and edit out the pieces that aren't the full body yes. If you have four you know, sweaters or sweatshirts or t-shirts and two of them really truly you're like, yeah, like this is great. And one of them you're, I don't love how I feel in this. It feels heavy and dense and there's no joy and yuck, but I'm keeping it because, like, because usually there's that tacked on, but I'm keeping it because I haven't found another one or I'm keeping it because what if I get rid of it and then I have to go three places and I only have two t-shirts or I'm keeping it because my husband really likes it. Whatever those situations are, then you evaluate, but does it really deserve a place in my wardrobe if it's not a full body yes? My answer is no. My feeling is no. I would rather have fewer clothing. I'd rather have my clients have fewer pieces of clothing that they absolutely love and wear those more regularly until they wear out than have a closet full of stuff that they're actually not putting on their body. Or worse, they're putting on their body and they're getting that dinner with the person you don't like feeling. Who wants that? So when you begin to assess and you can edit out what isn't a full body yes, pay attention to the other pieces and what elements are being repeated. Are there a lot of cream sweaters? If so, we're kindred spirits. Are there a lot of stripes? Again, kindred spirits. Is there a lot of one color? Is there a lot of one fabric? Do you have lots of corduroy? And you're like, wow, who knew? I love corduroy so much. Do you have a lot of the same shape? I really love a great straight leg jean and I have a lot of different colors of it. Or I really love denim, light wash denim, and I have lots of different shapes of it. You'll begin to identify what's repeating. What is repeating that is a full body yes, that's beginning to indicate and dictate and um, become your curated sense of style, your curated personal style. The other thing to pay attention to is what's missing. Clients are always like, you know, oh, I have so many holes in my wardrobe, but they can't identify what they are because they haven't done the work of seeing when I go to get dressed, what is preventing me from feeling great in this outfit? It's not that they need my help telling them how to complete an outfit from a, an accessory standpoint or a layering standpoint. It's that they fundamentally don't have the pieces that would allow them to wear the full outfit that they're trying to put together out the door. So this data also lets you see, I keep trying to put together an outfit with a white t-shirt, but I don't have a white t-shirt that's a full body yes. White t-shirt goes on the list. I keep putting together an outfit, but I actually feel like I need a belt because my pants are falling down and I like all the components, but these pants are too big or this waist is too big. I need a belt, belt goes on the list. Once you begin to do that, shopping becomes easier because you have a list of the missing pieces. Shopping becomes easier because you know what a full body yes feels like and you know what is in your wardrobe that already feels that way, that when you're in the store, you can compare it. I know what a cream sweater that's a full body yes feels like, and I'm willing to bring another cream sweater into my closet, but not if it's not a full body yes, because I have plenty of those. And I, I'm fine to have more, but only if they are equally amazing in a different way. So it's this idea of defining your style and knowing what your style is. It's not a matter of somebody saying, oh, you're bohemian. So just go into anthropology and look for the things that have the bohemian tag on it. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. And I think that's a beautiful thing because I want you to develop style self-trust so that you trust yourself to purchase the pieces that feel amazing for you. There is no rule that says, if you like to dress mostly classic, you can't have something super trendy in there or several somethings that are super trendy and mix them in with your classics. If you tend to go super feminine and lacy and patterned and delicate, and occasionally you like to wear a black motorcycle jacket or black boots or a pair of black leather pants with your beautiful blouses. There is no right way to define or create or curate a style. There is only knowing, do these pieces really truly light me up and I can feel that in my body so they get to stay? And what can I wear them with? Or do these pieces just feel kind of heavy and dense and not like my most fabulous self, but I've been relying on them because I have this idea that I don't know my style and therefore I don't know what to buy. And so ask yourself, get really clear, what is this story I'm telling myself about my style? Why do I believe that I don't know my style? Did someone at some point say, you kind of have no style or your style's all over the place. Some days you look bohemian, some days you look edgy, some days you look um, goth, some days, you know, whatever the case is. Where is that idea that you don't know your style coming from? Because usually it's that you don't know because you had an idea and then someone questioned it and now you're doubting yourself. Or you don't know because you like a whole lot of things and that doesn't feel like it's the right way to have a style. So you've decided that you don't have any style because you're all over the place. It could be that 
your style was one way and now you want it to be a different way and you just haven't figured that out yet. You haven't done the work because it feels way too scary and you don't wanna buy the wrong things or wear the wrong things. So it seems really scary to get in there and do the work. It's not unlike looking at your finances. When we avoid our finances, it tends to be bigger and scarier. But when we open the closet door and go in there and look at what's in there and really start to assess, is this full body yes or not? And if it's not, it needs to go. Knowing what your style is comes from getting in your clothing and doing the assessments and the evaluations to really understand what is in your wardrobe that's really lighting you up and is really working and what pieces might be missing in order to make complete outfits with the pieces that are working because then you know what you're shopping for. When you feel like you don't know your style, shopping becomes really hard because you walk into a store and you have no idea what actually is going to work with what's in your closet because what's in your closet hasn't been fine tuned and filtered to just the full body yeses. Once you do that, it's much easier to walk into a store and realize that actually would work with the pieces that are in my wardrobe because I've gotten rid of all those dense, heavy, yucky, irritating person for dinner, you know, pieces. I'm only left with the good stuff. So it's easier to know now, especially armed with that feeling when you go in the fitting room, is it that full body? Yes. Is it that, oh my gosh, favorite place, favorite meal, favorite restaurant, favorite people. Is it that feeling or is it the other feeling? Because if it's the other feeling, it doesn't belong in your wardrobe. It's not your style. I hope that that is helpful. I have released a course from the vaults of Kristen Kane style. Actually, it's from the vaults of the Together Act. From many years ago, I have a course called Wake Up Your Wardrobe. I have revamped it, kind of dusted it off and, and spruced it up and modernized it a little bit. It is still very relevant information. So I decided no one is benefiting from it. And there are lots of women who ask me, is there a kind of DIY, in addition to watching your videos, is there a DIY way for you to walk me through how to create a wardrobe I love wearing? And Wake Up Your Wardrobe is just that. So there's a link down below. You can purchase it from there right away. It's an easy download. It is a course that you can do over the course of a weekend, or you can take much longer if you would like, um, but it will get you into your clothes and wearing your clothes in new ways and inspire you to really take this work to the next level, even if you're not ready to work with me in style therapy. If you are ready to work with me in style therapy, you can book your one hour consult call at the link down below. And uh, that's all I got for you today. I would love to know, do you feel like you know your style? Do you feel like you're afraid to know your style? Because that would put you in the space of, oh, now I've got to go shop. And what if I mess that up? It's much easier to pretend I don't know my style or tell myself I don't know my style. I'd love to know, share. I love reading all of your comments and I so appreciate your being here. I'm over on Instagram sharing all sorts of random things, bluegrass and new house and Utah and style. So I'd love to have you follow me over there at Kristen Kane Style. Uh, that's all I got for you today. I hope you have an incredibly awesome week and I'll see you next Friday. Thank you for tuning in.